as we continue to cruise through summer, we are going to hit the second half of our look into the legality surrounding boating, being out on the water. Tom Sinus from Sinus Jameis Law Firm joins us to talk about injuries on the water. Hey, Tom. Hey, Todd. How you doing? I'm great. You know, last week we were talking about the basic legal rules that surround boating, the certification, you know, all the paperwork and, and things that you need to do. But accidents happened. And uh, when they do, obviously, knowing the law helps. Tom, what is what are the basic rules when it comes to someone being liable for boating? Is, is there obviously we talked last week that there isn't mandatory insurance. So how does this all work? That's a great question. Just because there's not mandatory insurance does not mean there is not liability. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the opposite. We clearly under Michigan law have liability in boating accidents for really two classes of people. The first is the most obvious, the operator of the boat. It doesn't matter whose boat you're operating. If you are operating a boat in violation of the law, and that can be state law, or the general common law rule of being careful. If you're doing it that way, what we would say operating a boat negligently and you injure someone else, then you as the operator of the boat are liable to the victim, which underscores the point we made last week of the importance of insurance. But there's another group of people who are liable and that is boat owners. We have a very similar concept here that we have in the world of automobiles. We have what we would call owner liability. And it says very clearly that the owner of a boat is liable for the negligent acts of those who the owner allows to operate the boat. And that means that if you let someone operate your boat and that person does so carelessly and someone is injured, even if you, the owner, weren't even on the boat, you as the owner are liable for the operator's negligence. Again, another great reason to to make sure that you have insurance if you are a boat owner. It not only covers you, but, but hopefully would cover those people who are operating your boat. So those are our general categories here, operators and owners. And it's very similar to the concepts that we have in the world of automobile crashes. What about the similarities, if there are any, between uh, DUIs uh, operating under the influence uh, when it comes to cars and then to boats? Great question, because it's a great analogy. Yes, we do have a similar concept when it comes to alcohol and drugs and boating that we do with automobiles, but we actually have a separate state statute regarding those substances and boating. And so the first and most obvious concepts here, you cannot operate a boat under three circumstances. If you're under the influence of of alcohol or a controlled substance, number two, if your blood alcohol level is above 0.08, or number three, if you have any amount of a controlled substance uh, in your body. And of course, those are rules that apply to people who are uh, over the the legal age. We have different rules and really a zero uh, tolerance rule like we have in the automobile context for those who are underage. But When it comes to owners of boats, we actually have a similar concept here that we were talking about in the context of liability. That is, an owner of a boat cannot allow someone to drive their boat if they know that the person is under the influence of alcohol or controlled substance or has that blood alcohol level, or if that person is visibly impaired. You, as a matter of law, you cannot allow someone to do that. The other thing here to remember when it comes to alcohol and drugs, also similar to the automobile world, is that if you are operating a boat under alcohol, under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and you injure or kill someone, that is a crime that is punishable as a felony. So it's a very, very serious matter, just like it would be in the context of a car. So in short, alcohol and drugs and boats do not mix. Then when it comes to an accident, say on the road, you know, you pull over, you might exchange, you know, insurance information, numbers and stuff. Is it the same when you're on the water, two boats get into an accident? What do they need to do? Again, very similar concepts here, different statutes, different words, but similar concepts. So one thing that's, that is similar, but yet a bit different is that the, if the operator of a vessel is involved in a, a, a collision that, if they can do so safely, the operator has to render aid 
to the person who had been injured. That's a state law requirement. Secondly, if you're involved in a, in a collision or an accident with a boat, you have to provide, you have to stop, just like you would with a car, you gotta provide your name, address, identification of the vessel and identification of the owner if that person is, uh, is someone other than the operator. Uh, if the operator of a boat has reason to believe they've been in an accident involving a serious injury, then they have to remain at the scene until help has been administered. There's also a requirement that in the instance of a collision or an accident involving a boat, that the operator needs to uh, report it to the nearest police officer or peace officer, as it says. So similar concepts, but yet its own set of rules for boats that apply here. Uh, as always, great information. If that's you out on the water, maybe you've been in an accident recently, know someone who has, well, there is a place you can go for more information and maybe you can get yourself a good lawyer there as well. Tom, give us the info. You can find uh, our law firm online at www.sinusdramus.com. Shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com or give us a call at 616-301-3333. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Todd.